Here's our introduction. Yes, we're going to play this first. So.
to start just by saying just thank you guys for coming and taking the time to come listen to us talk about chemicals. Um, Brittany and I were invited here um, not because we're experts, but as most of you probably know, we both sell Norwex products, which are really designed to um, radically reduce the use of toxic chemicals in our homes. Today, we are not has brought to our attention. We are not here today to sell you Norwex at all. We're here to share. Again, we're we're a friend telling a friend what we know about what toxic chemicals are doing to us in our homes and how you can really very easily eliminate a lot of them. So, all right, set. Thank you. Um, so as the video said, um, just when a baby is born, they already have 200 chemicals flowing within their body. Um, and then the statistics say that this number will grow over, uh, over 700 um, chemicals by adulthood. So just kind of a, an interesting fact that right when they're born, they already have all those chemicals in their body because of what the mom was um, ingesting. Um, so then we just have a statistic up here about um, chemicals that have been tested and not tested. It says that the number of industrial chemicals used in household items are up to 84,000. Um, the number that has been tested by the FDA is only 200. And then the number regulated is only 5 out of those 84,000. So just, uh, I mean, it's so powerful to see this. Um, the last time that the federal chemical safety law was updated was 1976, and nothing has really been looked at since then. So That goes along with this side, um, the slide with the law. This was, again, in 1976. Um, it says that they don't require industries to test new chemicals before they produce and use it, um, which is why, going back to that last slide, there's only five that are regulated, and um, kind of goes back to that, so they don't require them to test it first. Um, it says that they allow manufacturers to keep the ingredients in some chemical secrets, so some of them you don't even know about. Um, I just want to add to that too. Um, the, the idea of what we're finding out about chemicals now, I, I like to compare it to what we know now about smoking. In the 70s, you can see a commercial on TV where a doctor is telling you that the camel cigarette is the best brand of cigarette to smoke. And look what we know now about, about what smoking does to our health. It's the same thing that we're finding out about chemicals um, that we're using every single day in our in our homes, in our food, in our cleaning supplies, in our cushions. I mean, it, it's just, it's everywhere. So uh, we're going to go through a little sort of a checklist and talk about how safe is your home. Um, maybe to just sort of open your eyes to what might be lurking in your home and give you some possible solutions on how to um, get rid of those things. All right, so the kitchen. Um, it says, do you use plastic food containers? Many of us do. They're super simple, super handy, um, but glass is actually the best for storing foods unless you're using a BPA-free um, plastic. So. In the next slide I'll talk about BPA, but um, it says you should never use plastic in the microwave because you are basically heating up that BPA and it's then going on to, or the, the plastics, then the BPA is leaching on to your foods. So if you can, use a BPA-free plastic or use glass um, to reheat your things. Uh, this slide just talks about what BPA is being linked to. Um, an endocrine disruptor, um, possible risk of breast cancer, prostate cancer, obesity, and infertility. And just, uh, I mean, another statistic, BPA is found in 93% of all individuals. And this is what it's doing. It's, it's already proven to be an endocrine disruptor, and they're linking it to some of these other things. Okay, so do you filter your tap water? Um, honestly, I have no idea what flows through my tap, um, but... If you're, if you probably should check and see what you know with your municipality to find out what is coming through it. But the best thing to do is just automatically filter it. Just filter some of those things out, obviously by using um, either your Brita pitcher or you know a whole sink unit that would um, help to filter those toxins out of your water. Um, and do you drink bottled water? Now you might be wondering. What does bottled water have to do with chemicals? Well, if it's a BPA-free bottle, then you might think it has nothing to do with it. But I am going to actually show you a video here about a bottle's odyssey and show you how we actually are, um, through a circle of things, um, taking 
the chemicals from plastic back into our, our bodies. So even though you don't realize, um, you know, not by not recycling a plastic bottle, it really is, um, you know, causing harm. And approximately 1,500 bottles end up in landfills and the ocean. And is that? Oh, look at that! I just learned about this. Were you guys aware of this great Pacific garbage patch? I literally just heard about it. There, it's a place in the Pacific Ocean that in, that whatever this is <laughs> swirls together, and anything that is garbage ends up you know, pooling in one area. It is so thick that you can actually walk on it. I'm going to show you a picture. Look at how it is, how big it is compared to the United States. This is a picture of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. This is what, it's all being swirled together. And this actually, I thought this was kind of sad. This is a, a poor child who is actually salvaging things out of the garbage to either sell or reuse for his family, which is kind of sad. So in a way, it's like, do we really want to get rid of the garbage patch just for surviving on it? But no, but obviously that's that's not good. And you just saw what happens. It ends up in our marine life and eventually full circle back to us. So this is just a demonstration of cutting open a fish and finding um, plastics in there. Many of you probably saw um, Facebook or wherever the whole the talk about microbeads ending up in our marine life. Is anybody familiar with that? Microbeads are found in everything from our toothpaste to our, um, you know, your Bath and Body Works lovely smelling pump soaps. You can see the beads in there. And that they don't dissolve, they do not break down, so they end up, again, back in our marine life and back, in our, back at our tables eventually. Uh, the state of Illinois has actually banned the use of microbeads, which is awesome. I hope we follow suit. Well, what were they for? Why were they in the soap? Either, like, so, or as, as far as toothpaste, you know, to like whiten teeth and exfoliate and, I, you know, I don't know. But yeah, your cleansers, you know, your facial cleansers, sort of designed to help exfoliate um, your face. So it's bad. They just don't, they don't break down. Uh, what's under your kitchen sink? This is something that we're probably most passionate about. But um, obviously it says your typical household cleaning products, whether it's all-purpose cleaner, scouring powder, uh, may contain toxic and harmful chemicals. Um, I will tell you, as far as scouring powder goes, I think this is interesting, Comet has 147 chemicals in it. 147 chemicals. And again, as Brittany told you in the beginning, these things aren't being regulated or tested. Um, and if they are tested and proven to be safe, they're not being tested together. Um, so sometimes we don't know what we're using for this if it goes with what we're using for this. That makes sense. Um, the thing I like to, or I want to, call your attention to right now is um, labels. So we're being preached to about reading our labels on our food. I also really highly encourage you to read the labels on your cleaning products as well. For the most part, they always start out with this line where it says, um, it, you're in violation of federal law to use this product in a manner inconsistent with its labeling. So first of all, they're saying, you know, you're going to jail if you don't use it like this. But what I find more interesting is how they actually tell us to use it. So this one says, to disinfect a hard, non-porous surface, you must first pre-clean a heavily soiled area. Well, to me, that's sort of not very specific. Like, what is, what's heavy soil and what is pre-clean? So right away, I'm going to jail because I don't even get it. Um, but then it says, you are going to spray the surface until thoroughly wet. Again, I mean, are we talking about a puddle of spray cleaner or what exactly are we talking about? Then this, this particular product says let stand for 10 minutes and then wipe. 
So many of us are not using our chemical products in that manner. Um, and some, pro some of these products actually say to follow with a potable rinse. So they're saying once you put it on your surface, please rinse it off because it's dangerous. So I, I really do encourage you, and I'm going to point this one up just because we're in a school situation and I think this is crazy. How many of these are in our classrooms? A gazillion? Not yours. Not <laughs> <laughs> um, but this says, um, for disinfecting a hard, non-porous surface. So whether you have kids in school or not, if you're going to Walmart and thinking you're <coughs> disinfecting your shopping cart handle when you get there and doing yourself any favors, um, the directions for these anti-back wipes say, um, to disinfect a hard, non-porous surface, you want to thoroughly wet the surface to be treated. This one, by the way, also says you're in violation of federal law if you're not doing this according to the directions. Um, the treated surface must remain visibly wet for disinfecting. Use enough wipes for the treated surface to remain visibly wet for five minutes. So if I'm, cleaning a or if I'm having my second grader clean a desk, he is going to have to pull half of the, you know how fast these things dry out? It's dry, the desk is drying just that fast. So this is saying in order to actually be disinfecting your desks, you need to be using enough wipes for your desk to stay wet for five minutes. Plus, and now we're not even talking about what the chemicals in here that my second grader is putting on his hands as he's, and then probably not you know, washing his hands after, because technically we're washing our hands with these, right? And then he's gonna go eat a snack on his um, chemical-filled desk. So I really highly encourage you to read um, all of your labels. I do have to find out one just because that chamber looks not in here. <laughs> um, the Terminator, sorry Pat, if you're watching. Um, the Terminator <laughs> disinfectant, actually, this is something that I'm told by our custodial staff, actually is used to disinfect our desks. I got this label from somebody, it's on a pretty piece of paper. Um, but it says, again, violation of federal law to not use it according to the labeling. And right here on this label, it says, not for food surfaces. So I'm told that this is what we're using to disinfect our desks. And how many of our classrooms are, are we having snack at our desks? So that right there is sort of scary to me. And this, I just love this label. Danger, corrosive, causes irreversible eye damage and skin burns. Do not get in eyes or skin or on clothing. Wear protective eyewear, face shield, or safety glasses, protective rubber gloves, um, and protective clothing. I don't see our custodians doing that. So, they're in danger, danger, danger. It's just, I mean, it's just interesting if you actually read a label, what it says we're supposed to do. Yes, is it gonna work if we use it according to the package directions? Yeah, but it's really doing us more harm than good um, in the end when you're taking in those chemicals. Well, got a little tangent there. Um, what do we wanna do? How are we going to, um, pitch all of these chemicals. We're going to show you a lot more about that later, but you, what you want to do, and whether, again, whether it's Norwex or what it is, but you want to get a high quality microfiber. They have been proven time and time again to be as effective or more effective. In fact, I encourage you all to Google the UW-Madison Norwex study or the Wall Street Journal study on just microfiber, so not necessarily Norwex microfiber, but Google a high quality microfiber and you will find research that proves and supports that this is going to be as effective at picking things up off of a surface as um, your chemical cleaning products when used the proper way. So I recommend you find a high quality microfiber to remove the junk from your desks instead of spraying chemicals on and taking that in. Within 26 seconds of spraying any chemical cleaner, you actually are taking it into your bloodstream and then it quickly spreads to the rest of your organs. So if we're not sure what these things are doing to us, yeah, we aren't sure, really. I mean, some things we are sure, some things we aren't sure, but we're taking it in daily in our homes. And lastly, in the kitchen, do you cook with nonstick cookware? Now, this is something I never knew or realized, so um, nonstick cookware contains chemicals such as BFOAs, I don't really know what that is, but <laughs> or PTFEs, which um, obviously are, are not good for us. Oh. We want to use ceramic or um, cast iron as well. Their teachers, they get it, right? <laughs> um, so, a little tidbit that maybe you didn't know. And I'm going to turn over to Britt. All right, in the bathroom. Raise your hand if you use an air freshener in the bathroom. <laughs> we do have our few. <laughs> yeah. uh, right. Well, sometimes you don't even have a choice. You walk right. into a building and they're spraying. Yep. Yeah. 
Um, so an air freshener is, again, contain more of those toxic chemicals, um, like phthalates, and um, it says that the EPA put that chemical on a list that can present a risk to the environment or human health. Um, it disrupts the hormone activity again, and it's starting to show um, a slow and steady demasculinization of men. Um, so some other things that you can do instead of using air fresheners, a lot of people are putting plants in their house. They're natural air purifiers. Um, you can get an air purifier machine for in your room. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, just opening up your windows is a great way to get some of that stuff out. Um, or using essential oils for a natural fragrance instead of the fragrance-filled sprays and things. Um, another thing you can do is use an enzyme-based product. Um, Norwex carries enzyme-based products and what it does, um, they explained it, we went to a meeting on Tuesday night and we were talking about chemicals and what the enzyme, whether it's Norwex or any other enzyme-based product, what it's going to do is kind of be like a Pac-Man, she explained it, and it's going to eat away at all of those, um, I don't know. Matter, all the yeah, organic all the, matter. all the organic matter and it's going to keep it away. It's not going to, you know, shoot it out in the air, come back down or anything, it's actually going to get rid of it. Um, so that's something that um, that you can do as well. Um, we have should I talk? Should I talk sure. This? Well, yeah, and it does again. All of these things does not have to be Norwex. We're very familiar with Norwex, obviously, so that's our <laughs> that's what we're used to. But there are other you know air freshener bags that you can put in a place. We just happen to have that one along. <laughs> um, yes. So this one, um, there's um, this is the bigger size. We have a smaller size too. But these are great. You just hang them or set them. Like I have mine in my bathroom. I just set it on my windowsill. Um, they don't have a scent to them, but they're going to absorb all the odors that are in those areas. A lot of people use them by litter boxes, diaper changing stations, things like that. And it's just going to trap all those odors, and it's not going to set off any other fragrance. So you're not going to have those um, toxic chemicals in your what size room can you put those in? Like, um, I would say you would need a couple for a you know for a whole room deodorizing. You know, if it's mm -hmm. if it's for something specific, like small bathroom or cat box, then that one would do do just just fine. All right. Um, we talked about the um, the little beads in soaps and um, antibacterial things. Um, check for ingredients like the sodium lauryl sulfate and triclosan, which um, we recommend not, or, you know, AMA recommends not using. Um, those, again, are going to interrupt things within your body. This is going to disrupt the thyroid function and hormone levels. Um, it can cause sex changes in aquatic life. We saw that video how it just, all of that stuff gets put into our water and then back into our bodies. Um, more promoting the growth of more bacteria, um, and there's there's other alternatives other than that. Um, so we're just going to show a little video. Um, it's kind of a news report on on the antibacterial products and what they're doing. Many of us look to antibacterial products to kill germs and keep our families safe, but some of those choices could do more harm than good. The FDA has been looking into the antibacterial chemical triclosan for years now. They say they're nearing a decision on whether or not this is safe for use. Yeah, Heidi has an more side of whether or not they're justified in having fears associated with this product, Heidi. Well, Mark and Chana, there are a lot of questions, but triclosan we know for sure is in a lot of products. It's been scrutinized for years. Some say messing with our hormones. Other people say it causes cancer. But when you look at the products, one thing I do know for sure, we're using all of it in our daily lives. Triclosan is the antibacterial agent in soaps that line store shelves. What you may not know is this. It's in deodorants, body wash, socks, toys, and laundry soap, even toothpaste. A new study came out that's pretty alarming. It showed that it decreased heart function by 25%. It also decreased muscle function by 18%. Joshua Redd, a chiropractic physician, is one of a growing number of doctors and activists concerned about what triclosan does to the body. The European Union banned it years ago. It causes a slew of different problems throughout the endocrine system, too, causing early onset puberty, it's also causing problems with testosterone and estrogen, uh, causing problems with the pre reproductive system. As long as there was. Nixon was president when the FDA started reviewing the chemical. Well, why did the FDA approve this to begin with? Well, they didn't. In 1972, Congress asked the FDA to look into triclosan. Six years later,
later, the FDA published its first tentative guidelines saying it is not generally recognized as safe and effective. Flash forward 40 years and studies show that triclosan is no better than old-fashioned soap and water, but could be creating antibiotic-resistant germs. Study after study shows there is cause for concern, but there is one significant problem. Most have been done on animals, not humans. In animal models, the dose of uh, compounds uh, tested is often 100 to 1,000 fold higher than what we get exposed to. Uh, even on a day-to-day -day basis. Dr. Deb Abraham, a thyroid cancer specialist at the University of Utah, is waiting for a clear ruling from the FDA. Until then, he tells his patients this. If they're not sure, if they are concerned, the best thing is to buy plain soap. I want to show you what to look for at home if you want to see if your products have triclosan in it. Here's a bottle of soap, and what you do is you look on the back for the active ingredient. It's listed at the top. This one is at 46%, which is fairly high. Same thing for your deodorants, your toothpaste, but I noticed when I was shopping for running socks this week, it's in there too. If it says antimicrobial, look for the word microband. That'll be in all of your clothing products and also toys. So it's just about everywhere the FDA says they hope to make a ruling in the next few months. And until then, you know that you can check out your products and get rid of them if you don't want them in your home. Mark and Shana. Use soap and water. <laughs> soap and water, the basics, the old-fashioned way. All right, Heidi, thanks. Lisa, Ken, just make sure that you're checking the labels on things. The state of Minnesota just passed legislation to completely ban triclosan, however you say it, triclosan, everybody says it different, um, from their state. By, by 2017, you will not see any products that have triclosan in them. Um, it's one of the chemicals that Johnson & Johnson has recently taken out of their products and Bath & Body Works. I have heard that I haven't confirmed, but is going to be following suit by removing it there. So the whole state of Minnesota is going to be free of of this chemical, so I think somebody is doing some research that's saying it's not good for us. Hey, another thing for in the bathroom is your shower curtains. Um, when you're shopping for a new shower curtain, you want to try to make sure that you have one that doesn't have PVC, um, which is it's it's used to make the plastic flexible. Um, it can cause respiratory irritation, nausea, um, central nervous system damage. Um, there's, sometimes it'll say right on the packaging that it's free of PVC, um, otherwise you can look online too. But again, reading those labels to see what is in them. Alright, um, just an interesting fact, the average woman wears 515 chemicals on the average day. Um, that's everything from your face wash to your um, makeup things, um, your fragrance sprays, all of that has different kinds of chemicals in it. Um, one of the chemicals in a lot of those is parabens. Um, and again, it's those endocrine disruptors that's going to mess with the systems in your body. Uh, possible risks, breast cancer, infertility, at birth, and developmental effects. So look for those ingredients. Um, these are the big no-nos, especially those parabens. That's a really, really big one. Um, those phthalates, sulfates, the triclosan, synthetic fragrances, and synthetic dyes. Um, you'll notice that, I mean, you might, if you have little ones, sometimes you'll notice that they have skin irritations. A lot of it can be from those different kinds of products. Um, some of them have um, known carcinogens in them, um, endocrine disruptors. Um, switch to those greener formulas, uh, especially the products that you use every day, shower gel, body lotion, hand cream, um, your makeup, all of that. There are greener solutions to that. So that's probably why you're looking for it. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> um, so it, um, the reason that I started selling Norwex actually is because it really worked for me. Um, I have battled with acne since I was in middle school, and I had tried everything underneath the sun. I was on creams and prescriptions, and I tried Accutane for a year, which if you've heard about that, it was recalled for a while because it was so bad for you. Um, I had awful, awful reactions to it, and uh, along with some other ones. Um, I, about three years ago, um, my dermatologist finally found a product that worked for me, and so I was on that every, I took it one every day, um, but we had to be careful with the levels, and I had to go in every couple of months to get my blood tested because it would uh, mess with my potassium levels, so I had to go in every couple of months to get my um, blood level, or my potassium levels checked. Um, in June, I started using a microfiber cloth on my face instead of makeup remover. 
um, or face cleansers or any of that. Um, I just use the cloth and water. I don't have to take my medication anymore. Um, I don't have to pay the doctor bills to go to the dermatologist, which specialists are expensive. Um, my medication every month was $30. Um, getting my blood taken every couple months. I hate needles, so that was awful for me. Um, so since June, I have not been on anything. I've just used that microfiber and water. I don't have to use any makeup removers, um, any facial cleansers, moisturizers, anything like that. It's just the cloth. So things like that really do work. Um, and that's what got me into Norwex because I couldn't believe that I found a product that I didn't have to take any more medication for. I think the idea, again, you know, when I said you go with a microfiber to pick things up off of the surface, it's the same idea with our, with our skin. You need to get the dirt, dust, grease, and grime off of your skin instead of covering it up with yet another chemical or another product to try to, to remedy what, what it is we're doing. So, I always tell people, what did our great-grandparents use to clean, to clean themselves? You know, maybe, I don't know. I, I'm pretty young, so <laughs> my great-grandma probably used chemicals. But, um, but no, really, I mean, our ancestors probably used, you know, a natural soap and water, a cloth and water. You know, they didn't have Axe shower gel and, you know, these things that are just filled with chemicals and fragrance that are irritating our skin. Uh, just like when we looked underneath the kitchen sink, look underneath your bathroom sink as well. Look for those ingredients. Um, a lot of them have those, those toxic chemicals in them. Oh, is that me? Cheers. That's me. Okay. <laughs> and in the bedroom, um, what's in your pajamas, mattress, and pillows? Um, it says not what you'd expect. There's flame retardants in those things. Um, one thing that I always like to point out, too, is our mattress actually can double um, its weight in 10 years. And the reason it does that is because dust mites live in your mattress, and dust mites sit in there, and they have a party, and they reproduce, and then they poop, and... Um, yeah, and your dead skin cells and your dust mite poop and all of your new dust mite friends are living in your mattress. And um, so one thing that we need to do is to um, vacuum, you can either vacuum your mattress or you can use some sort of an enzyme product where it is designed to be a Pac-Man to go in and eat all of the dust mite poop that is living in your mattress. Um, that actually causes a lot of allergies, those dust mites cause yes. a lot of allergy issues. Um, so if you regularly keep up on the cleaning of your mattress, um, you'll notice less allergy problems too. But I think just in general, vacuuming even your floor is regularly, I was talking about the mattress, but um, flame retardants attach to the dust particles wherever they fall. So those chemicals are just going to glom onto the dust, and if you're not getting rid of the dust, then um, obviously more exposure. Um, for your children, consider snug fitting natural materials and products that are BD. BDPE, or I know you got it. You guys can read, right? PDPE free. Um, and Britt mentioned before, talking about cleaning the air, um, you spend an average of eight hours a day in your bedroom. So clean the air in your bedroom. Um, children spend closer to 12 hours. Um, consider adding an air purifier to bedrooms to help ensure a restful, chemical free sleep. Oh, look at that, it's been explained to us. Um, I'm not even going to try to say that. Um, you guys can obviously see that, but 100% um, found in infants and in mothers' um, milk. So there must be flame retardants everywhere in our homes because it's getting into us. Known risks, hormone disruption, permanent learning and memory impairment, fetal mm -hmm. malformations, behavioral changes, delayed puberty, decreased birth count, and possible cancer. Okay, the laundry room. Um, most detergents contain a lot of fillers and fragrances. Um, you can just walk down an aisle at Walmart or Piggly Wiggly, buy all that stuff, and you can just take it all in. It's overpowering. Um, you want to try to find a laundry detergent that doesn't have a lot of those things. Um, some of the top known brands, some of those fillers that they use are like seashells and drywall and anything that they can find to just fill it. Um, so you want to find one that's free and clear of all of that. They've come out with a few um, new ones in the last couple of years. Um, we just have an example here of a, a well-known um, laundry detergent. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't do that. Didn't do that. <laughs> and then um, one that is free and clear of all of that. And you can see, how long have these been in here? Uh, months. I okay. keep them in my kit. So this is what is coming and going into your clothes and it's staying into your clothes. It doesn't
can't ever rinse out or anything. If you tip it back, Brittany, you can see the fillers that are sitting in the bottom of that jar that will never dissolve. And that's getting into your machines as well and gunking up your machines and wreaking havoc on just the mechanics of your washing machine. So. Okay. Um, we have one. Okay, um, and then dryer sheets. There's actually four known carcinogens within dryer sheets. Um, so something we recommend is ditching them right away. Um, they, they're just full of those toxic chemicals that are, again, staying on your clothes. And when they're on your clothes, they're being absorbed into your body. Um, we've got, Norwex has some things, and they've got a lot of other things out on the market, too. Um, dryer balls are a great thing. Um, this is just an example of some of ours. Um, but dryer balls are a great alternative. They're made out of wool. Some of them are made out of like a, a plastic rubber, rubber yeah. free material. You can pretty much get them anywhere. Um, and they're great because they're going to lift and separate your clothes, which will reduce your drying time. So if you're looking to reduce your bill a little bit, um, it reduces drying time on it. Um, it lifts and separates, so it's going to get rid of some of that static and those wrinkles as well. So just a, a healthier alternative other than those dryer sheets. I you were going to juggle for a second. Yeah, I, I, guess, I could. Did anybody else think that? Was just like, no. um, and then another thing with dryer sheets is you use them one time and then you throw them away. And then we talked about that, um, the Pacific garbage area, all of that is being put into that area. Oh, that's me again. Um, around the house, how often do you dust? Dust is more of a nuisance, can be a health hazard. Dust attaches to the chemical particles, particles found in your home. We just talked about that with the, um, the flame retardants. Um, take dusting to the next level by using a dusting mitt to safely and effectively lift dust off of all surfaces. Um, so again, um, you can get these other places besides Norwex, but um, what all microfiber has an electrostatic charge. So what that means is when you're going to dust your surface, it's actually going to grab the dust and hang on to it. And it literally is going to stay on the mitt while you're dusting. So it's not going to be flying around in the air. Um, you're not going to be breathing it in. You actually are going to find that you're going to dust less if you use um, some sort of a microfiber to dust because um, it's, it's grabbing it and you're taking it outside, banging it off, and leaving it out there. Um, there is actually a chemical in Pledge that is designed specifically to attract more dust. So it says the dust is attaching to the chemical particles. So Pledge is one thing that has a chemical in it where you spray it and the dust is like, oh yay, and then it just finds it and attaches again. So you, you dust more often and you, Big Business loves that because then we have to buy more Pledge. So you want to dust without any, you, want, you just want to pick the dust up and get rid of it. Um, pesticides. Pesticides um, obviously are designed to kill pets or pests. Excuse me. <laughs> Oops. Um, not so good for humans either. If possible, avoid using them and seek out natural alternatives. Um, your local home and garden store can recommend alternatives. I think you're big on that, aren't you? Not fertilizing and pre or is it? What I are you saying? That yeah. you're good. <laughs> that I love you. Um, no, but right? Isn't that true? You don't mm -hmm. put anything on your no, yard. No, yard. Um, but I, think, I just remember having that conversation with you, sorry. Um, but I think it's interesting that 80% of the pesticides and things that we bring in from outside comes in on our feet and on our pet's feet um, in the first four steps walking into your house. So if people think you're crazy for making them take your shoes, uh, you know, their shoes off when you come in, don't. Don't even worry about it. You could give them a little speech on what they just brought into your house. but. I would either recommend saying, please remove your feet, or me remove your feet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Is it five o'clock? Um, please remove your shoes, or you can also you know, put a, a good quality entry mat there that will help to remove some of those things as you're coming through or your pets are coming through. Um, I guess you'd have to wipe your pet's feet too if you didn't have that. Um, but 80% of what we bring in in the first four steps entering your home. Brain and nervous system toxicity, cancer, hormone disruption, skin, eye, and lung irritation, all caused by pesticides. Five pounds for every American. Um, and scented candles. Who are we talking about this <laughs> um, Fragrance candles often contain phthalates, which can disrupt hormones, which we talked about earlier, particularly in children. So for burning candles around our kids, um, 
it's not good. Again, as Brittany talked about, you can freshen the air by opening the windows, um, and that also helps eliminate indoor air pollution. Um, I, the same goes for your, your wax discs that you melt. Um, some of them actually have um, formaldehyde in them. So when you're melting those certain brands of wax, it is putting formaldehyde up into your hair at the same time as your lovely um, you know, cinnamon scent or whatever. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit more about how can I clean if I can't use chemicals, because you're all probably wondering that, right? <laughs> um, I'm just going to show you a quick video before we do, um, we'll do a few demos for you so you can see how, how effective it is. Human beings Did you check this thing out? We discovered fire. We taught ourselves physically. It really cleans, like removing bacteria without chemicals. This I got seen. Now this does feature in our wax, but there, there are other studies that don't do just in wax. It'll take a lab and more than a few smears to test the claims and cleaning properties of the Norwex Antibac Microfiber Cloth. 32 bucks for a starter pack. Sold online and by consultants at parties, the Norwex Antibac Microfiber Cloth wipes away toothpaste smears in the bathroom. Windows fingerprinted and doggy licked, Norwex hasn't licked. And it will clean the butter off. Even greasy granite countertops. There's no residue left behind and you're cleaning without chemicals. Remember that buttered oven? Left side, clean with the chemicals of an all-purpose cleaner. Right side, the Norwex cloth and water. No chemicals. Impressive, but not half as impressive as Norwex's anti-back claim. Inside is um, silver embedded within the cloth. Any germs are killed and destroyed by the um, silver uh, within 24 hours after use. Is that a legitimate claim? Yes, silver has long been used as an antimicrobial. Bridget Fisher is the microbiology lab coordinator at the University of Memphis. She says the silver inside the Norwex cloth won't kill bacteria but yes, it should remove it, at least some of it, from a surface. We have coated these sterile petri dishes with E. coli. E. coli. Yes. And we... E. coli. <laughs> yes. <laughs> some of the dishes we leave untreated. Others, we spray a paper towel with a popular all-purpose cleaner, then wipe the dishes. Others, we wipe with a generic microfiber towel soaked in sterile water. Then others are wiped with the Norwex anti back cloth, also soaked in sterilized water. Fisher stores them all in an incubator for 24 hours. 24 hours later, she removes the dishes, calculates the amount of E. coli bacteria removed, and blows us away. I found that the Norwex cloth could reduce the bacteria that we recovered from the surface by 92%. Norwex removed 92% of the bacteria with just the cloth and water and no chemicals. The generic microfiber cloth and water removed 84%. The all-purpose cleaner with a paper towel, 0%. It removed none of the bacteria. When cleaning a spill in your home, that perhaps a cloth is better than using a paper towel and cleaner alone. And the Norwex anti back cloth stands alone as the winner in reducing surface bacteria. It does really work, and it is a wise buy. Don't buy it until Andy tries it. Tweet me what you want tested at AndyWise5, and you just might get on the show. Andy, will it work? Okay, so we're going to show you just quickly how effective a good quality microfiber. You can get other microfibers, don't get us wrong. We just know this one well. <laughs> um, but uh, Brittany's going to do a little window demonstration. Well, actually, maybe you'll take a moment here. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Normally we do this on a window, but we'll use a mirror today. Yeah. Does anybody want to volunteer to clean off this window? Any of you non Norwexers, let's get a. I'll do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to rub um, Vaseline on the window, or on the mirror. Um, and then just think of this as your doggy prints, um, nose prints, or they're licking it. Um, think of your kids who are getting fingerprints all over and little, little ones who are licking it. Um, so, <laughs> or whatever <laughs> or second Whatever you <laughs> might have on there. Toothpaste <laughs> on it, whatever it is. I'm just going to put some on here, rub it around. 
Okay, and then I'm going to have you try to clean it off with Windex and a paper towel. It's just going to smear it all around. It's not going to pick a whole lot of it up so you would get more chemicals sprayed on there. Use more paper towels. So those chemicals going into your body and... Nope, that's okay. okay. Um, so those chemicals going into your body and then that paper towel just going to waste. And so now we're going to try with the cloth. <laughs> it's not about selling you, but it's about... No, but I mean, yeah, it's, it's yeah. sold on the idea. But really, well, right, why buy these chemicals? So regardless of whether we know about what it's doing to us or not, you don't need to buy them. It's a waste of your money because it's doing the job, obviously, that well. Like this okay, is going to pick up, in order to be considered a microfiber, a fiber has to be split to the, the equivalent of one-sixth of a human hair. That's sort of like what you would find at, you know, Walmart or Target or wherever. One-sixth of a human hair, you can call it microfiber. Norwex is, is one two-hundredth of a human hair, so that means you basically have 200 fingers picking dirt, dust, grease, and grime up off of a surface. So this is going to be pretty a pretty good picker-upper, mm -hmm. and it's going to pick up everything. So we actually recommend that you use one that's not wound quite so dense on your body. Okay. Just because, yeah. you know, you can take your skin off. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> so now that cloth that's got all the Vaseline on it, yeah. what do you do with the cloth now? question. <laughs> with the chemical? Well, I'm going to do something else. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Down in the washing machine with your tie. No, I'm actually going to do something else um, first, and then I'll talk about that. Um, I just want to um, sort of, I don't know, I guess, just to show you again how effective a microfiber can be at picking things up off the surface, I'm going to use raw chicken in this case. Um, you know, they used E. coli. This is a sort of a, a quick, easy way to show you how effective it is. Um, I'm not at all worried about this being on my hands. It's because I'm confident they showed us how well it works at picking things up off the surface, even compared to whatever anti-back product I would use next. But I'm going to rub raw chicken on the table right here. And back in there. And I'm going to clean my hands with a microfiber and water, and I'm perfectly confident in that. And I'm actually then going to clean the table with the microfiber and water. No tricks, no nothing, just water. And this is a restaurant quality protein swab. It's basically what inspectors take around for a quick test to find out whether or not your surface is clean or dirty. I always kind of compare it to your urine pregnancy test. So, you know, in five minutes we'll know whether or not you're pregnant or not. Um, but um, in order to really test whether the surface is clean, you'd want to grow in a petri dish, you know, for 24 hours like they did there. Um, if this picked up the, the protein off the surface, this will turn green. And I'm going to actually let that sit for a second because, again, it's supposed to be a five-minute test. Um, so you guys believe me, and then I'm going to turn it dirty so you believe me that it wasn't a trick swab. Uh, what else were we going to do? Anybody have any questions right now while we wait for that? Sort of an improv. Uh... Okay, so you're still... Oh, let's talk about that. Yes, yes, yes. Let's talk about that. Thank you. Um, so now I'm going to have chicken protein on here, and or chicken juice, and Vaseline on this cloth. Well, because it's so dense, it actually, like, you don't feel the Vaseline on here. It picks it up and it locks it into the cloth. But the really um, awesome thing about this particular microfiber, and as she mentioned um, there, it's impregnated with silver. So basically that means there is silver um, in this cloth and in the fibers. And silver is a natural antimicrobial, so what it what it is basically is birth control for bacteria. The birth the bacteria babies can't be multiplying in here and you know causing you to have a stinky cloth because the 
the silver is stopping that. So you're going to go to the sink, you're going to rinse this out with hot water because you have to open up those fibers and get the dirt, dust, grease, and grime down the drain, most of it anyways. But this is so good at picking things up, it's going to grab on to, you know, to everything and there's still going to be something left. So then the silver goes to work on what's remaining in this cloth and within 24 hours it's going to actually self-purify. So whatever remaining chicken juice is on this cloth is going to be taken care of by the silver that's, that's in it. Eventually, you're going to want to launder it if you do enough Vaseline windows after, you know. How about, let's say you dump grape juice all over. Mm -hmm. Does that stain that? Yeah. I mean, it might. <laughs> Eventually, I mean, does, it'll come I mean, does, out, it, does it come out then? Does the yeah, stain I mean, come it, out? you could probably soak it if you, you know, okay. if you wanted and... It's not going to ruin the quality no, of the cloth. No, okay, it's just and honestly, like quality. if you look at this, I mean, it should it should be uglier than this even. Like I've taken some off of the my hooks and they've stood sideways. I mean, you should be using this for everything. Microfiber can hold seven times its weight in water, and that was another demo I was going to do, and then I forgot to put water in these glasses. Um, but you like basically, it is going to be super super absorbent. Um, I forgot where I was going with that because I lost my train of thought. Um, what was the question? Yeah. Cleaning it. Yeah, like so if you spill grape juice, go grab an Enviro cloth instead of a half a roll of paper towel to clean it up. It's going to work way better and you're going to be saving yourself money and you're in the environment as well. So, um, and just to show you guys now, I don't know if I've talked for five minutes, but this, this swab is still green, which means clean in um, the restaurant world. We're going to check go. And just so you know, this wasn't a green liquid in here. I'm going to rub the chicken, and you'll see quickly that it will go purple. So the microfiber picked all of the chicken protein up off of that surface and cleaned it. So way more effective, or I mean, way more effective than the way we're probably cleaning anyways, right? Because we're not reading our labels the way we're supposed to be, and we're not using our products the way we're supposed to be. So way more effective and way safer um, for you. And, and it's a huge money savings. Why would you buy all of these chemicals and spray them all around your house, even if you don't care about chemicals, when this works as well or better? What about forest subjects or uh, surfaces? Forests. Yeah, like, like let's say you could chew on a wooden breadboard. Um, I think... I know you're not supposed to. Yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah, right. You're not supposed to. I think it would work. I guess I've never um, tested on a chorus. Yeah. Yeah, no. I would think it would work too. I know you're not supposed to. Right. <laughs> yeah, so my answer should have been why would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be silly. That's a trick question. <laughs> yeah. Trying to throw me off, right? We don't, we don't claim to be experts, honestly. We have learned no. all of this just, you know, it's just a wealth of information when you you know, start investigating what chemicals are doing to you. So we don't claim to be experts. Again, we are friends telling friends, at least maybe hopefully sharing a few nuggets with you that you'll take home and the next time you spray a chemical cleaner, you'll be like, oh, yeah, 26 seconds? Okay, I have another question. Yes. Okay, you're mopping the floor on your hands and knees. Yes. You just have a hot bucket of water? Do you, or do you have to rinse and clean water every time you... No, no. I think that's the beauty of it too because there are so many little pockets and places for dirt and things to hide in this cloth. Like you literally, you could clean your house, like literally 90% of your daily cleaning jobs with these three things and water. There's a few things that might be a little more tough, but these three things and water. Um, the idea of this cloth, if you take it like this and you're going through your house, you can clean your house from top to bottom with this one cloth like this because you're going to have eight clean sides to work with as you're going through. There's also very little risk of cross-contamination because there are so many pockets and places for this stuff to hide. Um, so I could go wipe down my bathroom toilet and then go wipe down my kitchen counter with the same cloth. Do I do that in my home? Because you guys know who I live with. No, I don't do that in my home. <laughs> my boys don't have very good aim. So, I mean, it's, it's just logical, you know, you, you clean cleanest surfaces to dirtiest, but you could um, go backwards because this is going to hold on to lots and lots of dirt. 
What is the life expectancy of a cloth like that? Like how many? Um, this particular cloth <laughs> is, no, is warranted for two years. The life expectancy is actually five to seven. Really? Yes. Wow. So this is warranted to work for you for two years. You will eliminate um, stainless steel cleaner. You will eliminate any kind of multi-purpose spray. You will no longer, you will, I mean, obviously, no longer use any kind of window spray. Um, yeah, so this is going to eliminate your need for... So think how many chemicals you're not spraying oh, yes. anymore and all the paper towel that you're saving too. Right. Because you don't even need paper towel anymore. I don't have a roll in my house at all. Right. Because I just use those cloths to wipe everything up. And once you start getting used to using a microfiber, you are going to grab it for more and more and more things. Like when you first have it, it's like, oh, a clean window is really great. And then you start getting it dirty with grape juice and realizing how awesome it is. And you'll clean it. Clean everything. <laughs> I'm going to drink out of my plastic bottle now. <laughs> I don't know if anybody noticed that. <laughs> I do recycle, I promise. <laughs> any other questions from anybody? Like Jenny said, we're by no means experts by any of this, but we just wanted to tell you a little bit about where chemicals are um, in your homes mm -hmm. and some tips for things that you can do to help prevent that. So. Your hour's up, Jackie. Go. Thanks for coming. <laughs>